Well, 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 look who's back in DC. My mortal enemy, Washington, DC. And not for reasons you would expect, but because one time a crazy person kicked my car while I was parked minding my own business at like 4.30 in the morning. Cut to that footage right now. Someone walked up to my car and then kicked it as hard as they could on the side and then walked away, very mad. No damage, it was a light kicker. Real quick, I just wanna point out, I am less than one block away from my desired museum. I have never experienced that in all of my years of coming to this hellhole of a city. Parked right next to the IRS building. That, that's Donald Trump's least favorite building. <laughs> I'll be here all day. All the food trucks just lined up first thing in the morning. They're ready. They're so ready. You don't even know how much money these little trucks are going to make today. A display on trademarks in America. Mm. And so two round ears attached to a beanie mm -hmm. is an American trademarked thing that is the Mickey Mouse Club ears first used in 1955, which is actually not true, I don't think. I believe that they were on the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse before that. Oh my God, Kenny, do we have to do an entire video just to fact check one display at the Smithsonian? And here, for all you Gen Zers, uh -huh. see this, see this? In your town, there might be a weird shaped building like this that doesn't have that wor those words on it anymore. That, they used to serve pizza there. That's the Pizza Hut building design. That's now likely a Mexican restaurant yeah. or perhaps a uh, perhaps a chiropractor's office. I don't know what it turned into in your town. Dave's dream? Yeah, Dave's, Dave's dream. This is Dave. And it's just, it's him. Dave and now his family. Now my question is, are, is Dave's family still alive? Did Dave never have a family and dream to have a family? Mm. Or is Dave's dream just being with his family? Like, I, th this is very vague and uh, I don't have nearly the information I need. Dave, DJ? As we say, you did it. Your car's in a Smithsonian. Bet Dave never thought that a sweet, pimped out ride would one day be a centerpiece of the entrance of the National Museum of American History. Where are we going today, Dan? What are we, what are we doing? All right, we're at the Smithsonian Museum of American History, the National Museum of American History. Yeah, yeah. And I'm here visiting uh, DC with my family. Uh -huh. And um, I heard, uh, when I was researching, when I was clickety clacking on the keys. Do that one more time. When I was clickety clacking okay. on the keys. Okay, good. Uh, that uh, there's a Disney exhibit here. Mm. Kenneth, we went to the down escalator instead of the up escalator. Story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what I did, Kenny? I went on to ChatGPT last night. Uh -huh. I was like, ChatGPT, tell me what other exhibits in the Smithsonian collection, public collection, might I be able to find that would have any, any sniff of a Walt Disney, any kind of, like, oh, you know, this painting's in the Haunted Mansion, whatever. And it just started inventing exhibits that didn't exist. Well, it's you like, know. you could see the Star Speeder from Star Tours at the Air and Space Museum. I mean. You could see a scale model of Cinderella's castle at the National Building Museum. And I'm like, I, honey, I didn't ask for a story. I asked for facts. That's pretty cool, though. <laughs> That's pretty cool. should just do that now. You know, hey, we're giving you ideas. You gotta run with it, Disney and Smithsonian. Oh, here we go. Is this the beginning or the end? Great question. What do you think? Okay. Mirror, mirror. Reflections of America and Disney parks. Maps are a wayfinding guide. Oh, interesting. Is this gonna be a whole display about like maps? I'm here for it. Whoa. Maps are a wayfinding guide, helping visitors navigate, but they also give us clues to the deeper meaning of a space. <laughs> That's deep. <laughs> details of this reproduced section of the 1961 Disneyland fun. Obviously it's reproduced, they cut it into eight sections. Uh, <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> All right, we want to display the Declaration of Independence and we've got a fun way to do it. <laughs> flip the tiles to learn more about the map. Oh, we can flip. Uh, Whoa. Oh, I love that it's bilingual. That's amazing. Yeah, that's cool. That's very, very cool. 
There's Red Coat Mickey storming America. <laughs> the British are coming and they have rats. <laughs> oh boy, they didn't, they needed to uh, up the res on this picture. Now, man, do you know how dark it is in here? Look at that. I can see the lines though. I can see the jagged lines. What is this, uh, Alanis set video? That's a jagged little pill. How many Americans have taken a photo or home video on Main Street USA or in front of the Disney castle? And then how many other Americans have tried to monetize those videos? <laughs> Hi, I'm Disney Dan. <laughs> it's true though. That's, that's kind of cool if you think about Independent it. Independent studies suggest between 70 and 90% of Americans have visited either Disneyland or Walt Disney World. Are you kidding me? Wow. Dang. I love all these super cute pictures. Yeah, these classic pictures. Disneyland is more real than fantasy because it now provides the image on which America constructs itself. We're gonna have to look deeper into that quote. Jeez, Jeez I just made me just sweat. That. <laughs> Here it is. Here's the old Magic Kingdom map. I really appreciate that they show people, even during COVID in this like collage of pictures from Disney Park. Each of Disney's theme plans was designed to tell stories, some facts, some fiction, that provide not only entertainment, but also promote values Walt Disney and many of his 1950s contemporaries saw as inherently American. But their original perspective was limited and visitors have challenged the way that attractions represented American stories. Slowly Disney Parks have expanded those narratives to be more inclusive. Someone send the safe Splash Mountain people here. I'm not reading all this. No, it's a, it's a lot. Here's my favorite parade that I use all the time in so many videos. America Parade, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a classic. So many. Lamp post sign from the 4th of July celebrations at Disneyland in the 2000s. Oh, cool. Fess Parker's Davy Crockett hat. Is that really? Davy, Davy Crockett. He actually wore this. This was on his. I don't know what the rest of the lyrics. His greasy head. King of the Wild Frontier. Steamboat ticket for the Mark Twain. Oh my God. Oh my God. You have to see this photo. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't get all the cigarette out. There you go. You, you got to get it. Smithsonian. That wasn't Smithsonian. That's, those are some official photographers. Look at look at the little bit of cigarette left. <laughs> We got it. We got proof of it. This is incredible. Here's some old tickets here, right? Yeah. Oh, and then there's the ticket books. Look at this picture of Walt Disney with a bunch of Japanese Americans, mm -hmm. the Fukunashi family in Disneyland, 1955, opening year. I can't imagine that only a decade before this quintessential American photo was taken, my family was incarcerated at the Boston concentration camp. Oh. Holy God. Wow. And then look at this. Look at this, Disney World, 1976, Christopher Columbus in a parade, mm. right? What does it mean for historical figures to be presented alongside fantasy characters? <laughs> well, that's not, he's not a very good yeah, historical I know. figure. It's a really deep piece of museum <laughs> statement. Right. <laughs> My head is reeling. Yeah, they are going hard. <laughs> American stories more visible while others felt the performance reduced yeah, indigenous he, culture he, to entertainment. He brought in a lot of different tribes and rotated them regularly in the parks to, so for them to show the different traditions and stuff. Mm. And boy, I really am on the fence because you were giving a specific kind of culture like a main stage to be seen, but mm -hmm. it was also a sideshow in a way. Yeah. And like, wh what is that? This is, this is great. Disneyland has opened 1955. The parks have represented a carefully curated vision of the United States, shaping the way generations of visitors have understood American history and values, but that vision was incomplete and often characterized by harmful stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Did it work? 
Am I getting it? This is great. I mean, and this to, to, to answer that, I mean, one of the great things is that Disney really is, it's crazy how much more representation there is in the parks in a positive way than a negative way. And this is a great example of a little girl meeting Tiana. My daughter's first trip to Disney World at age seven and a princess that looked like her, that's amazing. Oh, here's Splash Mountain. What do you think it's gonna say? Oh, Splash Mountain, here we go. There's more of it over there. Courtesy of Bethany Bemis. Oh, Bemis at it again. <laughs> this is my favorite ride at Disney and I wish, and I would love it even more if it got a non-racist makeover. What? Epcot? Mm -hmm. No. Magic Kingdom World Map 1999, 1999. Magic Kingdom World Map 1984. So a little happy white family mm -hmm. and then kids of color. That's great. Progress. And no one got hurt. We all, we still have, we still have the leader of the Chinese National Party. That, <laughs> that's not true. Disney announced a rethink of Splash Mountain to focus on the 2009 film, The Princess and the Frog, featuring Tiana. The ride's original theme came from 1946, Song of the South. Uncle Remus contained racist depictions of Afro-Americans. Coming after George. After George, George Ford's Ford. murder. Are these fan-made pins? Fan-made buttons 2022, holy crap. That's Br'er Rabbit holding hands with Tiana. Are you freaking kidding me? The tone deafness of this is just, is just fan-made buttons. Pirates of the Caribbean, the redhead. Disney has changed the scenes where women are portrayed as the victims of sexual violence to one in which women gain agency as actors within the story. My prediction is Margot Robbie is going to play her in the new Pirates of the Caribbean and just make her into like lead badass character. Oh yeah, for sure. Because for sure. clearly it's worked with Barbie. We have uh, here with Scott Bryant. I don't, who, I don't know who you are, Scott, but you're very handsome uh, with the red, the costume character that's now in the park. Oh, cool. Yeah, look at this original concept art. I mean, like yeah. human trafficking the ride. <laughs> was oh my god look at these guys the same pair of twins wow. corporate disney's position on the lgbtq has been complicated and inconsistent however since the late 1980s the parks have been increasingly explicit in welcoming visitors who identify as LGBTQ+. Represent, representation shit is a shift from the straight nuclear family vision often depicted in the parks. It's so true. Also uh, mirrors changing American attitudes towards same-sex marriage. In 1980, Andrew and Andrew Sean Hessler. danced together at Disneyland date night, which was against the rules, same-sex couples dancing. Security removed the teens and the teens filed a lawsuit. The judge ruled in favor of the, against the ban, but only in this case, and Disneyland then dropped the ban entirely, claiming it was a response to feedback. Then Gay Days began as a 1991 grassroots effort for Orlando LGBTQ community and has grown more and more. This is like an incredible story of yeah. how, like look at this button, I danced at Disneyland. Oh wow. What a coded way to say exactly, you know. In, in 89, Xer and several friends returned to Disneyland to celebrate their ability to dance freely with whoever they choose. They had these buttons made to mark the occasion. This is Bob Gross shirt. Oh, yeah. Bobby G sweat right into this thing. There he, there he is. There he is, having a good time. This is a very small exhibit. It's only like a room and a half, but I, feel like it's a lot of very unique information that it's, I haven't really seen anywhere else. It's before. really crazy powerful. Yeah. It's a really powerful claiming space. And that's what this whole, I mean, this is really amazing. To all come to this happy place, welcome. When many public spaces are racially segregated, Disneyland offered, a, offered anyone who had a ticket to come in, but it mostly showed a happy place that was straight and white. 
yeah. by claiming their own identities within the park spaces and personalizing Disney symbols. Fans from diverse backgrounds have gradually made the space, made space for themselves in Disney's vision. Wow. What this really says to me more than anything is that Disney is the new modern religion because unlike literally every other religious text out there, Disney's vast catalog of intellectual properties have representation, even in the smallest, lowest effort of ways from Disney, it's still so many people are represented in so much of their stories and art. It's like, it's, it's, it's a religion of inclusion. It's kind of incredible. I can't believe they have fan buttons, but I actually kind of love that. I do too, because it's not exactly clean and tidy. No. If we, yeah. do, if we do a video on the ears, we gotta get good B-roll of this. Well, I thought this was really cool. The, one of these looked like a, a homemade one. Fan-made taco ear band. Yeah, I think that's really cool. Fan-made Calavara ear band. Now, what's interesting though, I saw Disney actually made a pair of ears and then here's like the official version. For Disney fans, mouse ears are an iconic symbol of belonging. By decorating an original black mouseketeer ear with other emblems that they identify with, crafty fans and Disney themselves have created new and personalized visual statements of identity. But symbols have different meaning based on who's using them and how. While many find these to be fun cultural expressions, others see them as perpetrating stereotypes. The ears let me express and represent myself in a fun way, and I think that's important. This is Rebecca Marquez. Fan-made indigenous people. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is really nice. The representation. Like, now we have Princess Elena. She's one of the characters you can meet regularly in the park, along with Tiana. Tiana, Disney's first African-American princess, was introduced as a costume character at the parks in 2009. We know we should do a costume evolution of Tiana. And, her, and the characters from the movie. Oh yeah. For the opening of the new ride. Because it's mainly been him, it's been her, it's been we've got the, the frog. Yeah, we've got the frog. Uh, no, no, well they did, they, the frog was maybe on a parade float, but they have the princess, now the princess is a new costume. Oh, right. And then there's the gator that plays the trumpet. Oh yeah. And then there's Shadow Man. What, oh, uh, what's his name, the evil guy with the fingers? Shadow Man. Uh, and then. Dr. Facilier. And then, is there ever been a lightning bug? He's on a parade float. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, oh, yeah, that's yeah, kind of yeah. interesting. We should, we should do a that's Princess fun. the Frog. Yeah. Like, here's characters you probably didn't even think about, but here they are. Yeah, every Princess and the Frog character at Disney Parks. It'd be a yeah. great video. But the first one, boom. But they got that info from a Disney Dan video. Not really, no, no. We're, just, we're just talking about covering yeah. it now. Just blew my cover. The original themed lands and values envisioned by Walt Disney still define his parks today. However, their appearances and meanings have changed over time. In 2021, Disney publicly announced a corporate, commission, a, a corporate commitment to inclusion. Disney's original vision of America as a place of free enterprise, technological progress, and liberty still exists, but the parks now promote inclusion and diversity as well. And you know what, that's so true. I mean, it's what America is now more than ever. It really was a white man's dream in the 50s. And now it is a, like now every, everyone's visible now. Mm -hmm. Like everyone's visible. And boy, that makes a lot of white people mad. It, <laughs> it really does. It really but like, angry. there's nothing wrong with that. And that's what's awesome about Disneyland. And that's why it's a better religion than any of the other ones. In 1955, Disneyland's guides were printed only in English and generally featured nuclear white families in their imagery. As of 2022, Disney Park offers maps in six languages as well as Braille and 3D maps. Oh, look, they actually have a book on it. Disney's Theme Park and America's National Narratives by Bethany Bemis. Get out of here. So the old Bemis had it again. That would be an interesting. We should get her, gotta give her a call. Bemis. Interviewer. Bemis. Get, your, get Bemis on the horn. This is interesting. I might check out that book. It's in the... God, if we do interview her, the urge that I'm going to have regularly to be like, Bemis! <laughs> Ooh, the sound of those damn things. Okay, that's good enough. Hold on, can we get one? Yeah. The Albert H. Small Documents Gallery. Now my question is, is his name Albert H. Small 
or is this or is his name Albert H and it's a small documents gallery? Someone Google it. Well, and this is my documents gallery. Or, hello, I'm Albert H and welcome to my small documents gallery. The return on this is suspicious. If his name was Albert H, it would just be Albert H small documents gallery, but the fact that it's Albert H small documents gallery Well, it's a small gallery. I it's a real that. mind bender, man. Oh, totally doing a video on Disney years now. Yeah, I think that's a really good one. I'm gonna totally look into a video on Disney gay days because I and love that. Gay that. days, yeah. Just Disney queer history. Yeah. And uh, and Albert Tiana. H. Small. We got to do yeah, one and on. we got to figure out if it's Albert H. or Albert H. Small. And Tiana. And Tiana. Yeah. All right, wow. that's good. Wow, three ideas. This is In a productive, productive vlog boy day. I know. <laughs>